Hi everyone, this is Donna Marie from This Yoga Life and I was just going to run through a short yin yoga practice. So yin yoga is a very slow, passive form of yoga which enables you to deeply relax and unleash and unwind and de-stress all this internal disharmony in the body that is created in modern life and it enables your body to release this physical tension it enables you the the fascia uh, on the outside of your muscles to really deeply unwind and stretch so this in turn um, and that's my cat magic by the way and this in turn enables you to have more freedom of movement in your body more openness in your body more length and more space which then enables you to feel brighter and more revitalized and more energized. We hold poses for a lot longer. So it's diff quite different to the standard Hatha yoga practice where we only, when we actually move through different poses and we're holding them. In Hatha, we hold them for sort of a minute at a time. In Yin, they're very slow. We hold them between three to seven minutes long. So it's a very slow form of yoga. It enables you to really emotionally heal and bring your body back into this rest and digest state. So this parasympathetic state that really is important for you, especially if you, you're living a busy life and you know this modern world of busyness and, and running around and, um, and, and chaos in life, it's important to cultivate that balance and stillness in our mind and in our body. So I'm gonna just run through a, a few poses just so you can get a bit of an idea of what yin yoga is all about and whether it's for you or not. Yin yoga can be quite mentally challenging because it is so slow and it enables you to just sit with your thoughts and sit with what you truly need to acknowledge and what you need to accept about yourself. And sometimes this can be prove difficult for some people if they're trying to avoid or or suppress certain emotions that can be quite difficult to face um, but really and truly and deeply from my heart yin yoga has been one of the most transformative yogas or for, forms of yoga or techniques of yoga that has been truly transformational for my health and many of my students health and life and relationships as well when we have more calm inside of us, we have more peace, then our, our life and our reality reflects that. So I'm just going to guide you through a few poses. And it looks like Magic's joining us today as well. So say hi, Magic. <laughs> Lovely. So before we start, I just want you to sit nice and tall so you can have this position here. And you're just thinking about rolling the shoulders back. Allow yourself to be present. Close your eyes down if that's comfortable. And just draw the awareness inwards. Draw the awareness into your breath, into your body. And I want you to try and acknowledge any thoughts, any feelings or sensation. We're not trying to push away or numb out or suppress them. We are allowing ourselves to acknowledge and heal from them. And this is why I love teaching yoga as a form of therapy, a form of healing, not just a wellness exercise. It is so much more than that. Just slowly come back, center your awareness, and we're going to move into child's pose. So come to the center of your mat, draw your knees out to the side, and if you're, it's quite nice. I'll take my socks off. It's quite nice to have socks off when we practice yoga, so you can really ground your energy. I prefer to. You're drawing the knees out to the side and you're just lengthening your arms away from you and you're melting the forehead down so the third eye center down into your mat 
And this is one position. So this is one option that you can do and just allowing the arms to be nice and passive. We're not holding tension. And um, we're just allowing the arms to be passive and long and relaxed. And if you have cushions or you have some sort of way of putting pressure on the lower back, then you can always place a, uh, a cushion or bolster if you have one onto your lower back. So this is option one. Option two is to draw the knees together and you're just drawing the arms behind you. So you'll feel the difference completely when you try option two. It's more restorative yin. And you're just allowing the arms to be open and you're just allowing the spine to be nice and long. So we'll hold this pose for about three minutes and I want you to just observe the breath. So you're becoming centered, you're becoming present and you're becoming aware of all of the feelings and sensations that you might need to acknowledge. And it's completely normal to experience some sort of emotion or um, emotional release when we do yin yoga or some form of, um, of healing when we do yin. So allow emotions to come up if you feel like they need to be released. When we move fascia around, this really much enables you to release stagnant emotions, energy that is otherwise stuck. So it's this is why it's so healing. So I'm gonna move into child's pose this way. There's always an option of placing hands through the center and you can just rest the forehead down as well. And that's option three. I like to make my yin yoga, all of my styles of teaching as accessible as possible. And this is very much important to me. It's important that I make yoga as accessible as possible to everyone. So breathe and allow the breath to be nice and long and fluid. Allow gravity to do the work for you, so it's effortless, it's effortless. The longer you hold the poses, the more intense it can get. So knowing that you can come out any time that you need to, from any pose in yin, take a break, take a rest. And when you do slowly come out, slowly transition. If you need to place anything underneath the knees, you can always use a blanket, cushions underneath here to support and blankets underneath the knees so you are not overstretching. It's quite easy to overstretch in the end, we don't want that at all. You want to feel into sensation of no more than 5 out of 10 with sensation. You want to find your edge and not go past the edge. Lovely and slowly and gently walk 
walk the hand back and then gently draw the head up. Lovely. So we're going to move into butterfly or half butterfly is always an option. So half butterfly is just having the left knee out to the side. You're just relaxing that right leg. You can place support underneath that right knee and then just allow that, that right leg to be nice and, and relaxed. Um, butterfly is half, full butterfly is here and we're drawing the knees out to the side and pressing the feet together. So the closer you have the feet towards, towards you, the more of a stretch you're gonna get here in, the, in, the, in here. The further away the feet are, the more like restorative that is, and the less intensity you'll find that stretch. So here, I can always suggest, if you have a couple of pillows or a couple of books, you can stack um, a couple of big books and put a pillow, and then you can just allow the, the head to melt onto a pillow. Some people just prefer to have the head hanging, so it's completely up to you. So just allowing yourself to open up the spine nice and long. And again, you can place the uh, blocks underneath the knees as well. And then we're just re gently resting the hands down, relaxing the forehead down. So you're just rounding the back. And just allow the top of the head, allow gravity to do the work for you. And you might have a cleansing of prana and chi. Nice uh, yawns, invite them in. And just from relaxing the body as much as you can. Relax the feet, relax the hands. Welcome love, you can always set intentions or have a word, create an intention and bring your focus to its centre, bring your focus to a particular word or a feeling that you might want to cultivate, so it might be rest, it might be focus, it might be restore, it might be be healing whatever word that you really resonate with right now it's very intuitive so just allow yourself to accept whatever comes to you first time round and then go back to your breath you're inhaling and with every exhale so if you can lengthen your exhale and elongate your exhale Every time you deepen and lengthen your breath, you're able to get a little bit deeper into the pose. Therefore, the body can soften and relax more and more and more. The fascia can soften and relax more and then you have more freedom, more ease in your body. Slowly prepare to come up and out. Gently press the hands to the feet. Just walk the thumbs along the inner side of the feet. So we're just giving the feet a gentle massage. So just massaging the inner side of your feet just to release in the fascia on your feet. When you get a foot massage or reflexology, it's amazing at releasing this fascia that it's all around here and getting reflexology done, I'm a reflexologist myself, enables you to really release and help to create more freedom of movement and joint mobility and, and more freedom in your body. 
lovely. Gently press the knees together, slowly. Press, pressing the hands and just gently swaying the knees to the right and left. So just wind screen wipers with our legs, left and right. And we're gonna do one last pose for this practice. And we just slowly come up to a forward fold. So for the right foot forward and then the left. So we're here. And then I want you to just, just gently heel toe the feet out to the side. So you might choose to place a pillow here in between the feet. Or a couple of books again. You can just put a pillow on top of the books. Because what we're going to try and do is just gently allow low back draw that down draw the knees out and then we're pressing the palms together and we're squeezing the opening here through your upper body into malasana so this is amazing for our digestion high magic this is great for the digestion lower back hips you can really feel this Think about opening up and lengthening and relaxing the head, the neck. Squeeze the knees back. Now this is option one. If this is too much for you, you can slowly come up and out and you're just having the feet forward a little bit more. And then you're able to just slowly rest back. But have a play and see what works best for you. The higher you're stacked up, the less intense it is. So if you, like I say, if you have blocks or books or big dictionary or, you know, you can really do DIY yin at home. You don't need to buy blocks and bolsters to do yin at home. You can very much improvise with pillows and whatever you have at home, cushions, and just use them in any way. So, if you do have bricks, you can always just stack them up. And the higher you have them, the less intense this will be. And if you don't have anything, you'll probably be able to feel that intensity right now and how strong that is. And see if you can relax the belly, you're softening where you can. And you can close your eyes down if you prefer. See if you can open up the spine, lengthen. It's quite nice to draw the awareness point upwards or just ahead of you. You're able to focus and center your attention. Keep your breath going. If you feel like your breath is restricted in any way, then you've probably gone too far. So you need to come back out, take a rest whenever you need to. And in Nian, we don't say that much. I'm going to allow you to create this stillness in mind and body now. Lovely, slowly prepare to come out. Gently place the hands behind you. Sit down. And then slowly lengthen the legs out in front of you. And you can just allow yourself to come to a seated position. Close your eyes down, placing the hands onto knees. Feeling into the benefits of the practice. Press palms together, the heart space. Breathing in gratitude for your body and what it can do, and what you can do, and what you are capable of doing. Being grateful for coming onto your mat. 
and practicing yoga. Namaste yogis. Thank you for sharing this practice with me. If you're interested more in yin yoga, then contact me one to one. We can do one to one. Or we can you can join our regular classes that we do, our weekly classes starting on the 29th of March.